Hello guys, I'm back with another video and today's episode we'll talk about Montgomery Clift, his rise to fame and his downfall. The movie star who could have had everything, but he was a victim of tragedy. Please make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. Please make sure to click the notification bell. I'd also want to give a disclaimer. I am not sure what is true or false in this video. I just find the information about the celebrity and make videos. This is not a biography channel, and it is just for entertainment purposes only. So please do not take any information from this video as factual. Thanks. Montgomery Clift was born in Omaha, Nebraska to William Brooks Clift and Ethel Fogg Clift. He had a twin sister, Ethel, and an older brother, William Brooks Clift Jr. Cliff's mother wanted her children to live the aristocratic lifestyle, so Cliff was privately tutored and traveled a lot in America and Europe. Cliff was sheltered his whole life through the Great Depression until his father was having financial troubles when the market crashed in 1929. They moved to New York and waited until Cliff's father's finances improved. Cliff's mother enrolled Ethel at Bryn Mawr College, but Cliff didn't want to go to college and instead he took stage acting. His craft began to blossom and he found his passion for acting. At age 15, he got his Broadway debut, and at age 25, he decided to move to Hollywood. When he came to Hollywood, he made it clear that he was going to do things his way. He will not sign a contract until he was ready. In the 40s and 50s, no actor was quite magnificent other than Montgomery Clift. With his good looks and talent, he was Hollywood's next leading actor. His rise to fame began with his first movie called Red River with John Wayne. During the set, John and Monty did not get along. Monty was a method actor who brings emotions to his roles and John played stereotypical macho male figures, so both were total opposites. Later on, he starred in a second movie called The Search. He didn't like the script, so he had to make it better by rewriting certain scenes and it made a huge difference. The film catapulted Cliff to full-fledged Hollywood star status and earned him an Academy nomination for Best Actor. His third movie would be The Heiress, starring alongside Olivia de Havilland. He didn't like her because he disappointed him when it came to her acting. In 1951, he got nominated again for another Oscar for his movie, A Place in the Sun. He met Elizabeth Taylor on set, and they started to build a friendship with one another. Liz had a huge crush on him, because he saw something in her that no one sees. Monty took her seriously, inspired and encouraged her to be great. People wanted them to be together, but Monty was drawn to women, but he was sexually attracted to men. Liz accepted that and became his friend. The movie was a big success, and he was making big career moves. He wanted to take control over his career and make decisions on what movies he wanted to do. If the studio wanted him, they had to give him what he wanted. When he first came to Hollywood, he refused to sign a contract, waiting until after the success of his first two films to negotiate a three-picture deal with Paramount that allowed him total discretion over projects. It was a give and take with him. Over the next decade, Cliff starred in several high-profile films, including Alfred Hitchcock's I Confess, Raintree County, and the box office smash from Here to Eternity, co-starring Burt Lancaster, Frank Sinatra, and Deborah Kerr, which he received his third nomination from the Academy Award. With his career skyrocketing, he developed a female fan base and people assumed that he lived in the Hollywood glamorous lifestyle. He didn't like Hollywood, and he preferred to stay in New York and spent $10 a month on a beat-up apartment. He didn't care about his looks, but his female fans did. He was not vain, but rather a simple man who enjoyed being left alone. Hollywood tried to mold him into becoming a heartthrob, and also hide his sexual orientation by pairing him up with females. It really bothers him because he didn't mind being gay, or rather the fact that he had to hide it. He hated the press because all they cared about was his love life, and he always avoids the press. With his career rising and in charge of his life, a tragedy occurred that led to his downfall. In 1956, Cliff was in a car accident while leaving a dinner party hosted by Elizabeth Taylor and her husband. He apparently fell asleep while driving and smashed his car into a telephone pole minutes after leaving a dinner party. Elizabeth Taylor was by his side with his head on her lap waiting for an ambulance. Photographers were there and Liz threatened them not to take images of him. He suffered a broken jaw and nose, a fractured sinus, and several facial lacerations which required plastic surgery. Although the results of Cliff's plastic surgeries were remarkable for the time, there were noticeable differences in his facial appearance, particularly the left side of his face, which was nearly immobile. After filming, Raintree County fans saw his damaged face on screen, and this bothered him. He took a hiatus from Hollywood for four years. When he returned, he looked old. After the surgery, Cliff's addiction to alcohol and painkillers was beginning to take its toll on him. The accident left a physical, emotional, and mental scar on Monty. He felt ruined and he drank more to numb the pain. Montgomery Cliff became virtually unemployable after his accident. 
He had prematurely aged, the effects of the accident, the pain in the pinklers all taking their toll on that beautifully chiseled face. This limited his range of expression and hurt his self-esteem. Subsequently, Cliff took mostly unglamorous roles, only worsening his damaged public image. After the accident, he plunged more deeply into wild sexual behavior. His behavior worsened when he got drunk during a set with Marlon Brando. He would carry a flask with him and just act like a fool in this irritated Brando. He was friends with Frank Sinatra until he was invited to his Bel Air party. He was heavily drunk and came unsexually to a man and Frank was not happy and threw him out. Monty had a steady career throughout his life. He continued to make films but played more disturbing, less heroic characters, often being cast as a victim of circumstances. In 1961, he starred in a movie called The Misfits with Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable, and he also starred in Judgment and Remembered with Judy Garland, Spencer Tracy, and Marlene Dietrich. He still went on to make a couple of movies until 1966. When he was at his lowest, Lorenzo was there with him. He hired him to help him around the house, but Lorenzo was Monty's lover, and he helped him get better and got him to stop drinking heavily. Monty died in his bedroom from a heart attack. It is believed that the abuse of alcohol and drugs was the cause of his heart failure. The autopsy also stated that he had thyroid, which contributed to his heart disease. His mother sold the building after his death with speculation that a plaque be installed reading, Montgomery lived here. After his passing, more information began to unravel. According to his mother, she stated that Monty was gay during his childhood at the age of 12 or 13. She notices that her son was homosexual and not bisexual, like his brother claimed. People stated that he took his first male lover in 1940. It was also revealed that he was arrested for picking up a young boy for sex in New York and it was dropped, thanks to Paramount Studio. People also claimed that he had an affair with Roddy McDowell and Jerome Robbins. Before the accident, Cliff was a closeted man who frequently made discreet trips to Ogunquit, Maine where gay men could have trysts without being noticed, then to Fire Island, which was a well-known gay getaway. He had a taste for S and M homosexual activity. He had affairs with Marlon Brando, Sal Mainio, Paul Newman, Henry Wilson, Jack Larson, William LaMessina, Libby Hallman, Morris Leonard, and Saint Summer. Scotty Bowers also stated that he would fix him up with different male partners. Monty always wanted new sex partners and he could never be satisfied sexually. Debbie Reynolds said that Monty was bisexual and that him and Elizabeth hooked up. She saw both of them kissing each other at a dinner party. During the set of The Misfits, the director developed homophobic animosity toward him because the director found out that Monty slept with another man while staying in his home. So, what can we learn from Montgomery Clift? Monty was different, especially during the 50s and 60s. It was an era of conformity and Clift chose to be different. He challenged every rule that the film industry had at that time and he was punished for it. He had integrity, strength, and a sense of humor that people didn't know he had. Hollywood has made him look like a tragic loser who couldn't get his life together. He was a man that considered himself as a worker and not a celebrity, a man who wanted a family. Cliff could have been the biggest movie star if he had done more movies. His sexually ambivalent, vulnerable characters were both revolutionary and ingenious. Many actors today still consider him as one of the finest actors in the 20th century. There is a documentary called Making Montgomery Cliff that shows a lighter side of Cliff. The documentary is an insightful labor of love that helps us to see that more clearly. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Please hit the notification bell. See you soon.